Hey campers, Georgia, back in the man cave. Just sitting here fiddling. It's getting that time of the year when I have a change of seasons. I start to look at my knives and axes and things like that and making sure that they're ready for the new season. Of course, I'm talking about winter. Yeah, I'm in Minnesota. It's kind of important. So I start pulling out all my blades and sharp and shiny stuff, start cleaning them up and sharpening them. Well, one of my regular subscribers actually said to me, George, I've seen you sharpen. You do everything right, but you complain about it's not quite sharp enough. And he suggested that I need to strop my blades after sharpening them. Don't know a lot about stropping, so I looked it up and kind of read up on it. Decided, you know, he's right. I need to do that. Maybe that'll make the difference to my blades. I mean, I can sharpen them. I have a really good... Uh, a workshop system that works great for me and they are sharp but I see these guys getting razor sharp blades and you know shaving their hairs on the arms and I'm not going to do that because I'm a little shaky maybe I will you know after I've stropped and I've got it right but I've got to learn to strop and to do that I need a strop so I bought me a piece of leather and a couple of other things I put them all together and I have them here I'm going to make myself a strop I want to put it on the wood. You can see I have everything uh, sitting down here. And I'm going to put my strop together with a little bit of extras on it. This will fit in my Fix Your Sharp and Shiny stuff bag that I have. And that's where I keep all my sharpening, just general maintenance of my, my cutting tools. So I'm going to make that quickly. And I thought you might be interested to see what, what I'm thinking and what I'm doing and how I'm going to go about making it. So, let's check it out. So as you saw there, I uh, found me a piece of wood, um, just actually from a piece of wood I had out back leaning up against the back of the, uh, the shed in the South 40. And here it is here. And as you saw, I marked out using the leather, just marked it and I've cut it. So now what I want to do is lay it out. So hopefully you can see this, I'm working over my shoulder here. And I have the piece of wood, and as you can see, I cut it. And basically what I want to do, oh, by the way, I did try stropping. It didn't work for me. I'm going to mount this on here. And I've got some JB Welger, and I found that this stuff works for everything. When I do my walking sticks and that, and I need to glue stuff together, JB Weld works really, really well. And I'm going to stick this on there so it's on a nice flat surface. So I'm going to mount that there. Then I thought, you know what, on the other side, what I like to do, I like to clean my blades. They get a little dirty in that, now, so I like to clean it off with this. No water involved. And it, all it is is a Scotch Sprite pad. So I thought, this is a piece of leather actually from an old work glove that I cut out. And here's my thoughts. I thought I'd put this on the bottom here, actually like that. I'll cut it to match. And then maybe mount this here. This is a little beaten up. But I'm going to keep using it. I prefer a little bit beaten up. It's not so harsh. It's a little bit better on this side. So add on there like that and have them on the bottom. I'll have my strop on the top. So that's the plan. Let's have a go. First thing I'm going to do is I want to clean this up a little bit. It's rock solid. Um, I'm not sure what wood it is, but it was, you know, on a pallet. And man, that, you know, it really is rock solid. So I'm going to do some sandpaper in here. You should wrap your sandpaper around a wood block and use it as a base. So I'm just going to clean everything up here and clean up these edges a little bit. Round them off so that they're not so sharp. And you can see the edge there. It's pretty sharp. Hit it with some sandpaper and it rounds it off nicely. A little is sharp, you're not going to give me splinters or anything. Don't want that. And just give it a quick rub down. So here you can see I've 
I didn't want to bore you with it, but I went through and cleaned it all up. Now there's no sharp edges that are going to catch me. I'm not going to get a splinter or anything from it, so we're looking good there. Now I need to wipe this off. Just going to use a damp cloth to get all the dust off because I don't want the J-Bean to have a problem with that. So yeah, I wiped it off and got rid of all the sandpaper dust. Thinking about it now, the problem I've had before, and you all know about this, is when you have a raw piece of wood like this, it probably hasn't been treated. When I say treated, if this gets in a really dry situation, it's going to start to crack, warp, that sort of thing. I don't want to do that, so I'm going to seal it up right now. So I found me, I didn't know I had this, <laughs> some uh, Ultimate Polyurethrane. It's an oil-based sealer, and the nice thing about it is they say it's superior scratch resistance, so it should be good enough. And like I said, all I want to do is seal up the piece of wood so it doesn't start to crack or anything, and we'll see how that works out. So here we have it, and just going to give it a quick coat here. Hopefully it'll last longer. The nice thing is, is this stuff really brings out the wood. Look at that. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? Huh. So there we have that there. We're going to let that dry. Put that lid back on. And then we'll do the other side. Let it dry. And then we'll put everything together. It's dried up. I left it overnight. It's dry now. I want to put this on. Mount it just like that. And then like I said, the other side, I want to put these two things on. So before I mount that, I just want to measure these guys. Which I've used and abused. <laughs> needs to be cleaned up and sharpened oh gonna have to do that and of course strop it <laughs> so let's put this guy on which side do I want to put it on I'm gonna put it on this side it's smoother using JB weld all you do is you just mix uh, equal quantities so I'm going to do that quickly so I mix it up here and I'm just gonna Put it on here and then what I'll do is I'll weight it down to get as flat as possible I'm gonna have to find something to do that shit. this is do it yourself actually if we turn it over and put a weight on it then we can work on that after a while I don't think that's so there you go now we let that dry for a bit shouldn't take too long I did add a little bit more pressure there while that's sitting on there, we can cut this stuff up. I need some scissors here. And let's cut this. So we've got that. This guy will go on there. I want to clean that up. So that'll sit on top of there. So we'll let that dry a little bit more. And then we'll put it on here and add these guys to it. Okay, so now I'm going to mount these things. Um, I've had some weight on you. Hopefully that's helped. So that looks like it's sticking. Make sure your surfaces are reasonably clean. I'm a little worried about this one. And then what I'll do is I'll trim the edges off here when it's all dry. Now we've got to put pressure on there as well. I want something heavy. But I don't want you to see this. Huh. So we'll cover it. Let's get some weight on this. Just like that. After all, it is do it yourself. So now the plan is, is just to let it sit and really set. And then once it's set, uh, we'll give it a test. I'm thinking that my poor little opinol here and you can see how I've abused it I mean I've, I've tried to keep it clean and I've uh, sharpened it a couple of times it still keeps a good edge no matter how bad this is but I've been cutting salt bags with it and it, it really I didn't clean it afterwards at work and I kind of left it and so it's made a little icky but Let's see if we can fix it up a little bit once this is all set. So, hang on. So, here it is here. And you can see the bottom there um, is on there pretty good. It's not going anywhere. And then what I did here 
and like I said, this is to clean up the blade a little bit. I, I'm not a big fan of using a light soapy whatever. I prefer to just use Scotch Brite and wipe it off with a cloth. And uh, just another piece of leather here to help with the stropping, hopefully, to do some cleanup or a quick strop. And then, of course, the, the actual stropping block. So there you have it there, all in one piece. Hopefully it's going to work. I use this at work. This is my everyday carry that I use at work. And like I said, I, I kind of abused it. And you can certainly see that I never cleaned it very well. Um, there's goop all over. You can see the blade is pretty damaged. Uh, you know, I, I really ab I have abused this. It needs to be cleaned up and fixed. So I thought, you know what, I put this together, why don't we see if it works for what I wanted to do. Now, like I said, I've never stropped before. I want to give it a try to see if it does make a difference with my sharpening. You know, if, if it'll slice a piece of paper and it's reasonably clean, that's sharp enough for me. I don't really need that fine point, but it's getting to me, you know what, I like knives and I'd like to get them as good as they can be. So maybe I should strop. So with that in mind, let's see if we can clean this up and sharpen it. Here goes nothing. So I've got my sharpening kit that I keep everything I use to maintain my tools and everything. And in there I have a workshop. And I love this workshop. This thing has saved me a lot of pain. This guy saved me a lot of hurt. Love it. So uh, what I'm going to do is give this a couple of swipes. So we'll see if we can clean it up and at least get some sort of sharpness on it. Then I'm going to clean the blade a little bit, sharp, give it a couple of more swipes, and then we'll do some stropping. Okay, so I've got my workshop here. So I'm going to do that. I've put some honing uh, solution on it. I just used this guy from Smith's. Uh, this is the fine. I don't think that I need to do any harsh stuff. But now I'm looking at it, I think I might just uh, change that quickly and we'll go to a little bit coarser, give it a couple of swipes. And this just comes off, that pulls off. Got the coarse, you can see there it says coarse, clips on here. It's magnetized, so when it goes on, it snaps in and it clips in here. It just sits in here like that. The trick with this workshop is that when you sharpen a curved blade, this tilts like that. Can you see that? So when you swipe, you just literally pull the blade across and it will tilt according to the shape of the blade. Placing your blade on the angle and I look, you can see it there, lines up nicely and I'm just gonna swipe across and this will tilt. So we'll do a couple of those on one side and then do the other side. You can hear, this is the coarse one, same thing here. So we've given it a, a couple of, oh yeah, that, that, that cleaned it up, or you know, even cleaned up the blade there, you can see the shiny bits. Uh, hopefully you can see it cleaned it up. Finer plate on here, and you can see it says fine on there, so. And we're just going to do the same thing again. I'm just going to repeat what I did. Five swipes and we'll see how we're doing on a piece of paper. How about? Don't need a lot of pressure. You just want to hold the, the blade onto the, the stone. It's really muggy. It's really muggering. Yeah, so everything's kind of damp. <laughs> Welcome to Minnesota. So I've got me a piece of paper here and let's give it a swipe and see what happens. Don't hold your breath. Not bad. I mean, that's, it's a nice clean cut, but it's not perfect. A really thin slice and I'm not. You see how it kinked there? It does cut the paper, but it kinked it there. That shouldn't happen. And although personally, Sharp enough for me for work for the, the, the even the fine stuff I'm doing at work. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and clean up the blade a little bit, um, get all the goop off it, and I'm going to use my new do-it-yourself toy. So let's do that. And all I'm going to do is just give this a couple of rubs on 
on this just try and see if we can be fresh I suppose I, that's what the blade looks like now and I've given it a couple of rubs on the outside it looks a little bit cleaner so um, we'll just keep doing that I would wear gloves if I was outdoors in here this this to me is kind of fine work and I, I need to be able to feel what I'm doing so uh, I could spend a lot of time on this and really clean it up but for me this is my everyday carry hard working knife and I got to tell you this open L surprised me I didn't think it would stand up to my abuse and it did so can't complain there if I spent a little bit more time and time on it you can see the blade is already starting to clean up so you can see there you can now see the opener <laughs> couldn't really see that before so it that works and I, and I, I like to do that it, it like really this and rub this way would I get a better result who knows but it certainly takes off all that nasty damage that the salt that I never bothered to clean off has done to the blade. Um, you know, if you want to get into the little corners, I have a little piece of scotch here and I'm just going to do it. Well, I'm doing this really quickly. I, I, I would like to spend a lot more time on it, but you get the idea. It's cleaning the blade up nicely. You can see it there. So now, I'm going to try and strop. I know nothing about stropping. I'm just going to wing it right now. The idea being that you guys can tell me what I'm doing wrong. Some of that stropping compound, I, I forget what they call it. Um, I have the gray. And I'm just going to get it all over here. I'm not sure how this is going to work. And I'm, I assume you're going to use the same motion that you would when sharpening. So you, you would hold it at the same angle-ish. Um, and I would assume you go backwards like that. Am I doing it right? Can you see that? I've got that angle there. And I'm just swiping across. Now, I want to get that the whole blade thing going, I'm assuming. Do the same thing on this side. It feels, it still feels sharp. So let's see how we do this time. Got some mix in there, but you can see that it cuts. It's cutting better than it was. Um, that stropping obviously made a big difference. Is it perfect? Look there. I'm not sure, but I, maybe this is not the best knife I should be doing it on. But it's a good place to learn. So, I've run out of paper here. And, you know, it might be me. How, how good am I at this? You know what they say, right? Pra practice makes perfect. Well, it's cutting in there really pretty good. I, I, really, I can't complain about that. For me, this is more than sharpening. Um, here I've got this thing that I've been working on. And you can see it It really does what I need it to do. Let me see if I can show you this here. Let's do this. I'm going to move that out of the way. And, you know, that's a pretty fine curl it's getting on there. I can't really complain about that curl. There's so many things. The curls are pretty tight and they're nice and thin. Can't complain about that. For me, like I said, for work, this knife right now will do everything I need it to do. It would be nice though to get it even better. <laughs> but I suspect that's going to take me a while. But hey, Practice makes perfect, right? Need to read up some more on stropping. You got any tips, ideas, or anything that you think can help me? Let me know. My do-it-yourself strop block. And just so that you know, I could use the leather. I want. To, I'd probably use this more 
on, you know, I should be putting a compound on there, but hey. Uh, it's sharp. But I can use my bigger, rougher knives on this piece here. And I can put some compound on it as well. And of course, this thing helped me clean up the blades. If it's got a little bit of rust or something on it, works for me. So there you have it. My do-it-yourself strop block. Nice and easy, quick project. Keeps me out of trouble. Thanks for watching. And remember, you all be careful out there because these sharp and shinies, they can sting. Just saying. Don't forget, like, share, subscribe. You know the story. Pretty sure I'll be back again soon. I'm going to put in some practice. I've got a lot of knives. They all need to be cleaned up. I've got the axes. They all need to be taken care of. Tis the season. Just saying. You be safe out there. And I'm pretty sure I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.